Hi and welcome to my overly excessive tutorial on how to use Cam Track AR with your actual hybrid or cinema camera in Unreal Engine 5. To make sure this tutorial is easy to follow I decided to use a free text-to-speech service instead of recording the voice over myself, as English is not my native language. I am in no way shape or form a professional Unreal Engine user. I put this tutorial together based on my own tests, trial and errors and information I gathered from watching other Unreal pros for the last few months. I will not get into much detail about setting up your scene or your render settings, there are much better tutorials here on YouTube to help you with that. We want to use the tracking information of CamTrack AR but still shoot with our high quality camera instead of the iPhone. This is basically the poor men's version of virtual production. Once the basics are prepared and work reliably, the setup time for a tracking shoot is actually super low and always accessible anywhere we need it. I came up with this when I learned about Cam Track AR a while back. I was super excited about the possibilities but a bit let down about the options you get from the app in terms of image control and quality. Unfortunately, after searching for a long time I did not really find much information other than the tutorial about using Cam Track AR with the iPhone footage like intended from the creator of the app. Also there's not much about Cam Track AR out there in general. Most tutorials regarding virtual production and Unreal Engine are going the more expensive route of using VR gear and real-time tracking etc. While this is a rather exciting method, it is really only ever getting great results if you invest into a lot of gear to fix all the quirks and of course you are bound to the studio space where you set it up. If you have that space at all available in the first place. So there is a lot of plus sides for using Cam Track AR if you do not have a large budget and studio space. Even though the quality of iPhones got really good the last few years, CamTrack AR does not use the full potential of current general iPhones. The app just shoots in a very low bitrate format with 8-bit color depth in either 30 or 60 FPS. None of that will result in a very cinematic result. Additionally, you only get to use the standard lens of the iPhone with a very wide-angle look. This is not very cinematic for close-up shots. There is a free version of CamTrack AR available but since it is a one-time payment and not super expensive it is worth investing in the commercial version. That way you directly get a .fbx file which works in Unreal Engine right out of the box. With the free version you would need a lot of extra steps using Blender for example to create the .fbx file on your own which could also introduce problems. So for the sake of this tutorial we use the full version and assume you do too. You are not bound to a specific location, you basically can shoot anywhere at any time. To a certain degree you are not bound by the area you can track the camera in. Much lower cost to get started, less hardware required. Less powerful PC required as we do not need it to render, record in real time for this to work. No need for tracking markers on the green screen anymore, so easier and quicker post-production times and less roto and clean up work compared to conventional post-production tracking methods. Not real time, no real way to make sure everything will work during the shoot itself. The app can mess up the track without you noticing it, so hard to reliably recommend the app for professional use where a lot is depending on it to work. There is no off-the-shelf thing you can buy, the rig for the camera and iPhone combo is completely up to you. Requires more fantasy and planning during the shoot as there is no visual reference on what the virtual scene will look like. To be able to use the tracking of CamTrack AR from our iPhone and use it with the footage of our actual camera, we need to build some kind of camera rig which allows the iPhone to be placed as close as possible to the sensor of the actual camera. It is essential to have the phone secured and have a rig which is reliably giving the same result every time. I built my rig using a cage on my Sony a7 IV and some attachments I had from other rig builds and parts of my gimbal etc. It is a good idea to get the lens of the iPhone to line up with the sensor of the main camera on as many axes as possible. Most cameras have marks on the body to tell you where the sensor is sitting within the body. Use these markers to align the phone with the sensor. Of course there will always be an offset, as both cameras' lenses can't physically be in the same place. But if you manage to align the phone with the camera on two of the three axes, your results may be better in the end. So aligning the lens of the phone to the center of the lens of your main camera for the left and right axis and the forward and backward axis will help a lot. That way you only have an offset for the up and down axis, as the phone will sit on top of the main camera. When you are happy with the rig and placement of the phone, measure the distance of the offset of your phone lens to the sensor. In my case it's 10 centimeters on the up and down axis. This is important for the setup in Unreal later on.
Most importantly we need to deactivate any form of image stabilization in our main camera. That goes for in-body sensor stabilization and also any form of lens stabilization. CamTrack AR deactivates all types of image stabilization in the iPhone while recording the motion. Instead of any type of internal image stabilization we need to find a way to stabilize the whole rig, so both the iPhone and main camera are stabilized in the same way. Our best options are gimbals and shoulder rigs. Keep in mind that using a shoulder rig or a gimbal will yield very different results. Both stabilize your images but a shoulder rig will give you a much more hand-held like look while a gimbal will look much more like a floating camera. If you do not have a gimbal, a shoulder rig might be the more affordable option for you. Here you see my shoulder rig as an example. Make sure the whole rig is balanced as good as possible. The rig should be able to be balanced on the gimbal without the gimbal being powered on. Otherwise you run the risk of introducing vibrations which will be picked up very differently between your main camera and the iPhone and make the shot unusable. Make sure the date and time of your phone and camera is correct and matches up. This will help later on with the files in post if you shoot a lot of scenes in one go. If you have a very reflective floor with no or very few details and texture, consider placing non-reflective markers on the floor to help cam track AR during the calibration process. The floor should be even, no slopes etc. To shoot a scene we first need to set up cam track AR. Make sure your main camera is ready to shoot at this point. Start cam track AR on your phone and start pointing the camera at an angle down towards the floor and start moving around. CamTrack AR will start placing a grid on the floor. If you have placed markers on the floor, pick one of those, point the camera so that the green square is aiming for this marker or a point you are confident is on the floor and not elevated above it. Press the Create Floor icon. You may now still move around the scene to give CamTrack AR more information about the area. As a good practice I start the recording on the main camera first, then on CamTrack AR. Don't try to hit both buttons at the same time, we will create a sync reference in the next step. Once both cameras are running we need to have something to sync both cameras later on in post. A good practice is to have your actor visibly clap their hands for both cameras to see. A clapper board if available will work great too. If you do not have an actor on your scene, try to snap your fingers in front of the camera or do a rapid movement like a fast tilt up and down. Now you are ready to shoot the actual shot. Completely ignore cam track AR at this point and concentrate on getting the shot in your main camera. This is what we are using in the end, so this needs to look good. The iPhone is just there to record the movement of the camera for us. Once you are done with the shot, stop recording on the main camera and then on cam track AR. If you want to shoot more takes, check in cam track AR if the tracking is still sitting the correct way and then just repeat the last few steps. Luckily, the full version of CamTrack AR saves a .fbx file of the camera movement which works right out of the box in Unreal Engine, so there is not much to do to get it set up. Use iTunes to access the iPhone and find the CamTrack AR app in there and then select all the folders from your shoot and save them to your PC. Copy the files from your main camera to the same directory. Here it is very helpful if the date and time matches between the camera and the phone so you can orient yourself on the timestamps of the clips to know which CamTrack AR recording belongs to which file from your main camera. Assuming you already have your Unreal scene set up and ready to go, create a new level sequence and open it. In the sequencer, create a new camera, then right-click it and select, Convert to Possessable. This step is very important. Since we created this camera within the sequencer it has to be converted to possessable before we can use it. If we do not do this at this point the camera will vanish from the level editor every time we leave the sequencer. In the level editor rename the camera to something easily searchable. A good naming convention is something like, my shot one underscore import. Also in the level editor create a new actor. Name it something like, my shot one underscore mover.
drag the actor on the camera to parent the actor to the camera as a child object. Now set all location and rotation data of the actor to zero. This way the actor is in the exact same place as the camera. Detach the actor from the camera and now parent the camera to the actor. We will get back to the placement of the actor later on as it will define the ground plane of our scene. The reason we are doing this is that the camera tracking data we will soon import, has keyframes in it which will not allow us to move the camera freely in our scene to place it where we need it. By parenting the camera to this actor object we can instead move the actor through the scene to place our camera in the right place and retain its animation. Before we import the tracking data we need to create another camera. This will be the camera we will actually use to render our animation at the end. So in the level editor create a new cinema camera. Did you notice that this time we did not need to convert this camera to possessable? That is because we created this second camera directly in the level editor so it is not bound to any level sequence like the first camera we created was. Name it something like, my shot one underscore render cam. Parent this camera to our first camera and again set all values for rotation and location to zero so it sits in the exact same spot as the first camera. Now is the time to enter the offset. If you have for example a rig where the iPhone is centered on the sensor of your main camera but sits 10 centimeters on top of your main camera, you need to enter an offset value of minus 10 on the Z axis, so your render cam just like the real camera sits 10 centimeters below the track camera. Same goes for the X and Y location in case you have an offset between your iPhone and your main camera on these axes too. We now have set up our camera rig in Unreal. In your level sequence change the frame rate of that sequence to the frame rate you recorded on your main camera, in my case 25 FPS. Do not worry about the fact that Cam Track AR recorded in 30 FPS. Unreal will still use the tracking data in real time and just conform the movements to 25 FPS. Now right click the first camera that you have in the sequencer which we called, my shot one underscore import, and select import camera. Now select the correct .fbx file which belongs to the recording of the shot you want to produce. This is where the date and time matching between your main camera and the phone really helps. In the import dialog remove all check marks other than, create cameras, and, replace transform track. You now have the track data in your first camera. Expand the render area to the end where the keyframes stop. Notice that we will render out the complete animation from frame 0 to the end and not yet care about any in and out points. So there is a lot of stuff we will render that we will later on cut away during compositing. Since Unreal renders rather fast it's much easier to not care too much about it at this point and have it easier later on to align the animation with the live action footage during compositing rather than trying to get it right here in Unreal at this point. Select the camera cuts bar in the timeline and delete it. On the left side while being on frame 0 click the plus sign on camera cuts and select your second camera, my shot one underscore render cam. This way you make sure that you will export the correct camera at the end. To assure Unreal's render will match as closely as possible with your actual camera, we need to tell Unreal what camera we actually use. So we need to set up the correct sensor size and focal length we have used during the shoot. This can be rather straightforward or a bit confusing depending on the camera you use. In my case I used the Sony a7 IV, a full frame camera with a 35mm lens. So in that case I can use a preset called full frame DSLR from the list in the film back setting. This gives me the correct mm dimensions for the sensor. In the min and max focal length I can enter 35mm and be done with it. If you use the camera with a crop sensor, for example a micro four thirds camera like the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or a Panasonic GH6 etc. You need to know the exact dimensions of that sensor and select custom from the film back drop down and enter these dimensions manually. In the case of the Pocket 4K it's very important as the camera does qualify as a micro four thirds camera but has a slightly bigger sensor. You should find the exact dimension on the spec sheets of your camera on the manufacturer's website. You need the sensor size, so Unreal knows how to treat the math behind the focal length in relation to the size of the sensor. This is because on a full frame camera a 35mm lens does look like a 35mm lens. But a 35mm lens on the Pocket 4K for example would look like a 66 67 of a millimeter lens.
once you have entered the correct dimensions for your crop sensor size you also need some simple math for the focal length if you use the speed booster focal reducer during the shoot. A famous brand is the Metabone Speed Booster Ultra for the Pocket 4K. The Ultra has a focal reduction factor 0.71x. So if you use the 35mm lens with the speed booster your actual focal length would be 25mm, 35 by 0.71. This corrected focal length paired with the correct dimensions of the sensor should give you the correct field of view in Unreal to match with your real live camera footage. Based on this math we would have the field of view equivalent of a 47mm lens, 35mm by 0.71 focal reduction by 1.9 crop factor for the pocket 4K sensor equals 47mm. Notice that Unreal will give you an aspect ratio for your sensor, this is important for the export. By default the camera should be configured to constrain the aspect ratio. But we need to use the same aspect ratio when we render out the animation. So keep this aspect ratio in mind. In the case of my full frame sensor it is 1.5. Now that we have prepared everything we can use the actor that our two cameras are parented to to move the whole rig in our scene and place and rotate it so the camera films exactly what we want to have in the background of our live action shot. Very important here is to place the actor exactly on the floor of our scene as it is often not the actual world origin floor. The tracked camera has the correct offset from the floor, so the actor defines what the floor in the scene is. At this point we see the biggest problem with this method. We're basically flying blind in Unreal as we do not see what the live action shot looks like and if it lines up correctly with our scene in Unreal. So this is a bit of trial and error. Good thing Unreal renders fast. In theory, once we are happy with the placement of our camera we are ready to render. It might be a good idea to first render out our animation with standard low quality settings before we crank up the resolution or quality settings for our final render to make sure everything lines up perfectly. Click the film clapper board icon to open the movie render queue. If you do not yet have the movie render queue, you can add it on the plugins page. This would be the point to install it if you need to and restart Unreal Engine. Open the settings for the render, keep everything at default, a simple JPEG sequence is fine for our first export. Only thing you need to change is the directory for the export and the resolution. This is where the aspect ratio of the sensor comes into play. Remember I had a 1.5 aspect ratio for my full frame camera, so this means I need to divide my horizontal resolution by this factor giving me a vertical resolution of 1280 if I want to render in full HD 1920 horizontal resolution. So whatever aspect ratio your sensor has, use it here to find your vertical resolution. Confirm your settings and then click on render local. Unreal Engine will now render your shot, depending on the complexity of your scene and the specs of your PC this should not take that long. There are a few things we need to do first. Import the video clip from your main camera. Import the iPhone MP4 file from the same folder you imported the .fbx file into Unreal Engine. Drag the main camera's video file on the new composition button so it matches your footage dimensions and frame rate. Move the timeline indicator to the point in time of your main footage where you can clearly see your sync point, the hands connect during the clap for example. Now drag the iPhone footage on top of the main camera's footage. Leave the timeline indicator at the point of the clap and move the iPhone footage forwards in time until you see the exact same moment in this footage too. Now import the JPEG sequence you rendered in Unreal. Make sure that it matches the frame rate you have rendered it in. 
After Effects has a default frame rate in its project settings for image sequences, so there is a chance it will use the wrong frame rate on import. You can change it by interpreting the footage and entering the correct value. Drag the JPEG sequence into your composition and align it with the first frame of the iPhone footage. That way the render should be in sync with the main camera. At this point before you put too much work into the shot, a good method to check if the tracking sits and the placement of the camera is correct, have the render on top of your main camera footage, disable the iPhone footage as you don't need it anymore and set the opacity of your render to 50%. Sometimes due to different frame rates during recording it may be off by a frame, so if it feels off to you in motion try and pull the JPEG sequence a frame forward or backward and see if it feels more accurate. Now cache and playback your composition and see if everything is correctly aligned and the tracking sticks and matches the movement of your real camera. If you are happy with the results, great. You've done it. If the placement is not yet correct, go back to Unreal and fine-tune and re-render until everything looks good. If there is a really apparent mismatch between the render and the live-action footage, retrace your steps. Most of the time there's something wrong with the sensor size or focal length settings. But of course there's always also a possibility of CamTrack AR just messing up the track during recording. There's nothing much you can do about that, other than retrying the whole shoot. As a little bonus tip you can do the following. If you have a shot like in this example, where the actor is sitting or standing stationary, you can use the focus tracking feature of the Unreal camera by tracking an object in your scene close to the position of where the actor would be. If you don't have anything in this position you can also just place an actor object and track that. By doing this and using the correct aperture value for the lens, you should get a good depth of field effect without the need to keyframe that aspect of the animation. If the tracking works, the placement of the camera is correct and you are happy, feel free to re-render from Unreal in a higher resolution and with all the bells and whistles you need. Now key your green screen footage and add all the effects you deem necessary and finish up your shot for final render. Notice in our example, the lighting is not matching between the live action footage and the Unreal Engine scene. Our subject is lit from the right side, but the light in Unreal Engines comes from the left. Consider these details during your shoot, the better everything matches, the more convincing your shot will look. Like I said in the beginning of this tutorial, you are not bound by a studio space for example. We did a test shoot a while ago on a parking lot and had our actor walk for 10 meters while two people followed him with a green screen. We tracked the whole area and his full walk with cam track AR out there in the wild and managed to produce a working VFX shot from that. Imagine the studio space you would need to set up to accomplish the same thing with the VR gear method. It took us only a minute to set up the camera and the iPhone while being there and shoot the scene. So there is a lot of potential for independent low budget projects to use this method. I know this was a rather long and complex tutorial to get through and it may not seem to be worth the trouble, but a lot of these steps very quickly become second nature once you have successfully done a few tracking shots with this method. Of course I do not claim this to be the only or most efficient way to do it, but it produced usable results time and time again for me and I hope it will for you too. Feel free to leave a comment and your suggestions on how to improve this method. That way we can all learn from it and expand our toolkit. If you watch till the end, I can't thank you enough. I hope this tutorial will be of great use for anyone looking to do some form of virtual production for the next film project. Feel free to hit the like button if this was of help to you and share this video with anyone looking for a method like this for the next movie project. Thank you again for watching, and now go out and produce something awesome.